Hi, I'm James Catherall. I'm a co-founder of Catherall Audio, and today we're going to be talking about automatic patch changes. So I'm going to start with a little bit of a disclaimer before we get too far into this video. This is a paid plugin. This is not free and it does not come with MainStage. You need to purchase this outside of MainStage and then get it installed inside before you can use it. It costs $29 and I think that it's completely worth all of that money. This has totally changed how I do patch changes and I use it in all of my concerts and it's changed how I set up my concerts. So it's a great plugin. It was developed by Brian Lee, who's an awesome guy. He did a lot of synth programming in musical theater. He has a website and a YouTube channel. I'm gonna link both of those things down below in the description so you can check those out. He's made a lot of great main stage content. He hasn't posted a lot lately, but the stuff he did put up is great. So you can check that out down in the description down below. I'm also gonna put a link down below of where you can purchase this so you can buy it after you watch this video. Next, I'm gonna walk you through how to set it up and get it working in your main stage concert. But first, I wanna demonstrate how it works so you can get an idea of what it's gonna do. So let's check it out. This channel strip right here is what's gonna be triggering those auto patch advances. You can also see this little red sliver. That is the key that I have it mapped to. So that's mapped to this C. And as soon as I press that key, it's gonna play that piano sound that I have loaded for this patch. And it's also gonna trigger the patch change after that sound gets triggered. I'm gonna play a few keys on the keyboard so you can hear the sound, and then I'll go down and press that C3 so you can see what happens when you trigger the patch change. So as you saw, when I pressed that note, you could hear the piano and then it switched patches. I set up a few more of them so you can see how quickly it works. So I'm gonna start by going through the notes slowly so you can see it change, and then I'll go through it a bit faster. So it's really quick. It's gonna load those patches almost instantly. So you don't have to worry about any waiting time for these instant patch changes. It can help out a lot in a pinch. If you have any really complicated synth parts and you need a patch change, but you don't have time for them to be able to go and switch those patches, this makes it way easier to be able to play your part that you need to play. And then maybe the last note, or you can set it up on a specific key that as soon as you press that, it's gonna automatically go to the next patch. And the way the plugin works is it's creating a virtual foot pedal that's being triggered every time you press that specific key that you have it mapped to. So now we've gotten a demonstration. Let's work through setting it up in our concert. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the audio MIDI setup. I'm not gonna do a deep dive into the audio MIDI setup in this video. I covered it a little bit more in a previous video. You can check that one out right here. All right, so we're looking at our IAC drivers. You wanna go to ports, and then you wanna add a new port with this plus button right here. I already created mine and I called it APA for Auto Patch Advance. You can title it anything you want. Just make sure it's a name you're gonna remember and know it's for your Auto Patch Advance. Once you've done that, click Apply, and then we're gonna close out of Audio MIDI Setup. Now in my concert, I wanna create a new patch under my last patch. I'm gonna hit the plus button, and then I'm gonna create a new channel strip over here, and I want this to be an external MIDI channel strip. I want it to have no input. For the output, I want it to go to that Auto Patch Advance IAC driver that we just created, and I wanna to go to channel one. I want it to have no output, and then I'm gonna hit Create. I wanna go down to where it says MIDI effects, and I wanna load the Scripter plugin. The Auto Patch Advance works in the Scripter MIDI effects, which allows you to code your own plugins to use inside of MainStage. So once you have it installed correctly in MainStage, you're gonna click this drop down menu, and you should see it appear right here. It says Auto Patch Advance. I'm gonna click that. And the plugin is pretty straightforward. The only thing you can really change is the CC number right here. This is gonna be the CC number that the patch change message gets sent over. So by default, it's on 87, and all of these numbers are usually empty, but if you wanna to change to another one, then you can select a different one here. I'm gonna stick with 87. Next, I'm gonna mute this channel strip, and then I wanna double click down here at the bottom and name this APA. And then I wanna to go to the attributes for this channel strip, and I'm gonna change it to bright red. That's just a personal preference for me because I like this channel strip to be really bright so I know exactly where I've mapped it to on each patch. Next, I'm gonna go to the concert level and then I wanna go to the assignments and mappings tab and then I'm gonna go to the gear on the top right to add a new assignment. And then it'll pop up down here. I'm gonna click where it says no assignment and this new window will pop up. 
from top to bottom, I wanna start with the device. I wanna set it to that APA IAC driver. The channel, I want to only be channel one. The type is gonna be single value. The number needs to match the number that we set up in the Scripter plugin, which for this one, we did 87. MIDI through, I wanna do do not pass through. Send value to is gonna be none. And then I'm gonna title this APA. Next, I'm gonna go here to where it says unmapped. And I wanna to go to this actions folder. And then this is where I can set up that next patch command. And the cool thing is you can actually set this up to do different functions besides just going to the next patch. You can have it set up to go to the previous patch, to skip forward 10 patches or backwards 10 patches, or you can even have it skip to a specific patch that you want. But for now, I'm just gonna use the next patch function. I'm gonna go back to the workspace tab, and then I'm gonna go back to my auto patch advanced patch. And I wanna skip this patch. So I'm gonna go to the gear, and then I'm gonna click skip. And you can see that it minimized the patch. Skipping the patch just takes it out of your patch list and it makes it so that if you're using the next patch buttons, it won't go to that patch. Because I don't want to use it, it's only going to be the auto patch advanced patch and nothing else is going to go inside of it. Because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that patch and then I'm going to paste it as an alias into the different patches that I want to use it on. I'm not going to go too deep into what an alias channel strip is. Basically, you can just think about it as an empty clone of a channel strip that's pointing you back to the original channel strip instead of creating a duplicate or an extra copy. Here's how I'm going to create that alias channel strip. I'm going to highlight the APA channel strip and push Command C. And then I'm going to go to this piano channel strip and I'm going to push Command Option V and that'll paste it as an alias. You can tell you did it right if you see this green arrow on the channel strip. That means that it's an alias channel strip. And now we can see that it's spread across the entire keyboard and I don't want that because that means that any key I press is gonna trigger the patch change and I only want it to happen on a specific key. So I'm gonna go to the layer editor and then I'm gonna go to high key and I'm gonna double click it and type in the key that I want and hit enter and then same thing for low key. And now it's only mapped to one key only. And that's how you set up the auto patch advance. So now comes the moment of truth where we test if we set it up correctly. So if we did this right, I can press this C key and it's gonna trigger that patch change. And there we go. You can go back and try it again. And it works. So every time I press that key on that patch, it's gonna automatically go to the next patch. So now let's cover one last part of it. This is just a couple extra pieces of the setup you wanna make sure you do so that you don't run into any problems with the auto patch advance. I'm gonna go into layout mode and any hardware devices you have set up in your concert, you wanna make sure that they're mapped to a specific MIDI port that's different than your auto patch advance MIDI port and also not the all MIDI port. Cause if you go to all, then it's still gonna send it to that auto patch advance. So I'm gonna check that for all of my buttons, my keyboards and my pedals to make sure that nothing is set to MIDI port all or to that auto patch advance driver. The next thing is back in edit mode. I'm gonna go up to the concert level and I wanna uncheck send unassigned MIDI to all channel strips. So you just wanna make sure you go through those extra steps so you don't end up getting any MIDI loops when you're using the auto patch advance because that can end up freezing up your concert and then you have to quit out of it and then reopen it again. And that's our video. Don't forget to check out the link down below with all of the different Brian Lee content and the auto patch advance so that you can purchase it and use it in your own concerts. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button. And if you have a main stage topic you'd like for us to cover in the future, leave a comment down below and we'll see you in the next one.